guys, um, uh, this sermon today, I hope you're doing well, first of all. And this sermon today is called Talking to T-W-O, The Mirror. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I just worship you for what you're going to do. And permeate the atmosphere with your spirit, Lord Jesus. Let me teach something that will affect people's lives, oh God, in a positive way, Lord God. Let me show them you in just a way that hits them right square in the eyes. Let me show them that you are there for them. Lord God, I praise you and I lift you up, God. In the name of Jesus, speak to me, speak through me, hide me behind the cross today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so guys, I was watching um, a preacher, the person who I, I consider my pastor. I was watching him this week, and... Uh, it was an old sermon that I was watching, and he was talking about uh, the way we talk to ourselves, and uh, he says he writes, he said he writes letters to himself about what God says about him versus what he says about himself, and I, uh, that began in me, um, the thought of talking to the mirror, the, 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 the thought that we talk to ourselves, T-O, um, ourselves in the mirror, but when we talk in the mirror, we actually talk, um, uh, to, to T-W-O selves. We talk to the self that people see and uh, people, we talk to the outer self, which is the self um, that I could say right now, I'm wearing a, a red sweater. Um, I could say I'm wearing my green glasses. Um, that look purple in some light. I could say that I'm, that I have brown eyes, and all that. That is the self, that is the first self we talk to, or, and even that self, um, has, even that self has, uh, things we can say about it, like, that self has things I can say about her. Um, the out the outer stuff that we can see, like I just mentioned, like my red shirt and my glasses, and then there's the inner self that we talk to. Um, we could say I'm a nice person. We could say I'm a nice person. I'm a very giving person. I'm a person who loves music. I'm a person who loves Jesus. I'm a person who went to Bible college. That is the fir that is the first self we talk to, the one that we want people to see. But there is another self we talk to, the self that we really are. Like for me, I could say, um. Like, for me, I've said in the past, I've said, uh, that self will say, I'm single and no man will ever love me. Or I could say other, other disgusting, not godly things about myself that is, that are totally, um, wrong. And they're because we're... We're conditioned in our society to really think negatively about ourselves, and and when some 
but he says something positive. We're, we're just, most of us are just not able to receive that because we, we are just so conditioned to think negatively about ourselves. And if the Lord is saying to me and you today, negative negativity about yourself starts today um he wants me to tell you that um negative may be the world's normal but negative is not his normal and he says wherever you are and thinking about yourself he said it's okay but just know that that with his word and with his love, he'll get you out of negative thinking about yourself. Um, because you are in his image. We know this from Genesis 3. We know that we are in the image of God. We are in the likeness of God. So that likeness is just so fraught with characteristics so we know where that we're not god but as his children we have his characteristics we have the ability to be kind we have the ability to love we have the ability to share we have the ability to create with our words Whatever God is, because um, when we get saved, when when we receive Christ, we also receive uh, the nature of Christ. So whatever He is, we are. But for us to get there is a work in progress and process. And He says. If you're not there, that's okay. He'll get you there. And just be honest to say, Lord, I'm not there yet. I want to be there, but I'm not there yet. Because God cannot work with dishonesty. A lot, of, a lot of people are dishonest because the church... Um, as an institution, not the body, not the body of Christ, but I'm talking about the institution of the church has trained us to be dishonest about ourselves and about where we are because we think it's a lack of faith. But if you're honest to say, Lord, I, I want to be there, but I'm not there yet, it's okay. Because we all have to start from somewhere. And we all are going through something. And we all talk to two selves in the mirror. We talk to the self that we that is seen, that is uh, whatever, like we're... And we talk to the self that is not seen. So, um... To explain it a bit better, there's this movie called uh, Dear Evan Hansen. It was a Broadway play. I never saw the Broadway play, but it's a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. And um, in, in the beginning of part of Dear Evan Hansen, he is typing on the computer. And... It starts off very falsely positive, like, um, it starts off saying, Dear Evidence, and blah, 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 blah. But then you hear the internal negative dialogue, and he's saying, cut it out with the false positivity, and, and get real about how you really see yourself and so that positivity can be real can become real but if you start 
with lies and self-deception um, uh, that will lead you to nowhere. Because if you can't be who you, if you can't be honest about who you are and where you are, he can't heal you. The Lord wants desperately, desperately, desperately to heal you. But if you're not honest about who you are and where you are, He can't heal you. If you're not honest about who you are and where you are, and if you're not open to change, He can't heal you. Because He's not going to um, usurp your will for His. He, he has control. But he doesn't take control. It reminded me of, you know, those, uh, when somebody's learning to drive, I don't know if they still do this, but there is a steering, there are, have you ever seen those cars with, uh, two steer, two steering wheels? Uh, they have, they have one steering wheel for you as the driver and one steering wheel as the instructor. And the instructor can take over um, the, if the driver is struggling. Um, but but, um, but really the car is, is being controlled by the driver. The instructor is there to guide, to help, and can take over if need be, but um, he doesn't always take over. He said, let me be the instructor. Let you, I'll let you drive your car. I'll let you make your own decisions, but just know I'm here and I'm willing and ready to take over if you want me if you want me to he said you've been dealing with this false self for too long and I want the true you to emerge the true you is phenomenal the true you is who he's created you to be but you're you're too busy hiding behind what you think you should be and not open to receiving who he's made you to be. And he said he wants the mask to come off today. He wants um, the, the outer self to match with the inner self. And he said that's a process that he can help you get to. But unless you are honest about where you are in your life and who you are, he will not usurp your will. He, want, he wants you to, to have a life that is just so... Uh, in in his will for it and he wants you to just live the way that that he's designed you to live with purpose and with passion and with destiny he said you've been living under what you deserve for too long and i'm not saying uh, physically with money and cars and all that stuff. He's saying, um, I'm saying emotionally, you've been living in, uh, depression and anger, unforgiveness, resentment. You're, you've been living with all these negative emotions for too long. But the scary thing he said, some of you, have been living with these negative emotions, but, but projecting something different. 
and he sings, um, and he's saying, stop projecting that everything's okay when you're really angry. Stop projecting that you're, you're fine when your life is now going to hell in the handbasket. Stop, he said, stop Instagramming your reality. And I don't mean Instagramming as in stop going on Instagram or whatever. But he's saying, emotionally, you are, you've lived on social media physically for so long that your life now has become like an Instagram post. Like you, like you say to the, uh, say to the world, oh yeah, I'm alright, and you smile or whatever, and you say, we have the perfect family, but you might not say that, but you, but you act like it when you and your husband fight every day and you haven't been intimate with him in months or whatever. Like, he's saying, stop living your life like an Instagram post. Stop living your life like a Facebook post. Like, uh, you just write something uh, on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat that is not really true. You've done that so much ex- you've done that so much um, externally that now you're your your real life has come become like an Instagram post. And he said, I don't need Instagram in real life. He's like, I need you so that we can work together to become the you that I see, not the you that you pretend to be. See, there are so many people out there you would not believe uh, pretending to be who they're not because society says they should be this or that. But the Lord is calling today for you to stop uh, living Instagram and to stop being to stop being your fake self and become the real self who He's designed you to be. There's, um, there's this big push about becoming who you really are and becoming who you really are, but I don't think it's becoming who you really are, um, in the world so much as becoming the, who, who, uh, people expect you to be, you know? Um, I think that the world's becoming who you really are is become, become what you feel in the moment. So, if you become what you feel in the moment, um, sometimes I feel like this, so I'm like this. Or sometimes I feel like, um... Like, I am this gender, so I'm becoming this gender. Or, sometimes I feel like I'm this person, so I'm becoming that person. No, not, not become who you really are. I would say, become who God says you are. Not you say you are. Because you don't know who you really are. Only God knows who you really are. And he wants to reveal to you who you really are, who he's made you to be. So the world says, be yourself. I say, I say, be God's self. Be the self that God has ordained you to be. And you will say, Rachel, what is that? How do I know? How do I know who the gods ordained me to be? Eat? Well, it sounds simpler than it actually is. 
the only way you can become the God self and those two people can line up in the mirror, your internal uh, self can line up with your external self, um, is to spend time with God. And I'm, um, people always say you've got to spend time with God, you've got to, um, You've got to make time for pockets and whatever. I say something weird. I say, carry God in your life. Yes, there are times where you can spend time in prayer and time with pockets and time with life. And your relationship with God, like anything, needs to be built. But really... Uh, God want, doesn't want time with you, like I said a few, a few months ago. I said God wants to do life with you. God wants to be with you when you're taking your kids to soccer practice. God wants to be with you when you're alone at home on your computer. Uh, God wants to be with you. When I say be with you, I, I know that God's already with you. But God wants to, to interact with you in those moments. Not only like private time with God. God wants to do life with you. A lot of people say um, they need someone to do life with. I say... Invite God into that life. Not just out there, I pray to you at night, or I have special time with you. And yes, like any other relationship, you need special time, you need to carve out time. Because a relationship to grow and mature needs time. But, um, first of all, uh, he wants to do life with you. He wants to watch Netflix with you. He wants to um, cheer with you for your kids at their soccer game. He wants to go in that business week with you. And when I say with you, I know he's with you all the time. When I say with you, I mean interact with you. He just doesn't want to be this thing up in the sky that you pray to at night or whatever. He wants to do the daily mundane cleaning, laundry, all that stuff with you. He wants to speak with you when you are carrying your laundry up the stairs. Oh, when you are paying your bills. When you are doing your life stuff. He wants to become... A, integral part of your life. So I think there are two kinds of giving your life to the Lord. The first kind is the kind we all know where we ask for salvation, where we ask for the Lord to come into our lives and, and save us and uh, endow us with power and, and be with um come into our lives to save us and set us free from sin and all that. That's the first kind. That's the kind we all know about. Uh, that's the kind that we say the sinner's prayer on Sunday, that we say all that stuff um, on Sunday about Jesus coming into your life. But then I believe he wants to come into your life and interact with you. He wants to do life with you, and he wants to be involved in every single decision you make. Um, I heard, I heard some preachers say that God doesn't care about the little stuff. Well, God, in my experience, God cares about everything. Uh, you would not believe the times when I've not even prayed for things, when I've just thought things 
and he's answered the prayer that I didn't even know to pray, that I thought was too small for him to pray, for me to pray. Even this week I was, um, something happened because I was waiting for something to come in, uh, to pay for something, and then it did come in. And this week, uh, um, there was another thing that I was praying for months for it to happen, and this week it finally did happen. So, and I wasn't even really praying for that. So sometimes when you uh, do life together with God, um, he will he will answer prayers that you didn't pray. And but when I say do life together with God, don't be all spooky and. Oh, go in a trance, and I'm like, I act all weird. When I say do life together with God, I mean bring Him into your life. And when you bring Him into your life, he, he, your spiritual senses for the people that you need to do life with will go up. Yes, you do need people to do life with. Yes, you cannot do this thing alone. It cannot be, oh, it's just Jesus and me or whatever. But within those people you need to do life with, he will show you who it is that you need to do life with. And that happens in different ways. For me, I get a sense of who, um, who he wants me to draw closer to, who he wants me to get away from, who he wants me to friend on Facebook, who he wants me to chat to. I get a very strong sense of that because of the time I spent with God. So he's heightened my senses. So when people come into my life, I know, first of all, where they fit, or how they fit, or what purpose they're called to serve in my life, or, and I also know when they leave my life, um, how they are, they are supposed to leave my life, because sometimes we hang on to people that are not supposed to be hung on to. They are there to serve um, for a season and then they leave. And sometimes uh, God will bring people there for a lifetime. And sometimes certain people serve different pur purposes all your life. Sometimes they can change purposes from one season to another. So you need to have that sense of, of time with God and doing life with God so he can show you and tell you things and the way he speaks to you and whatever. And God speaks to people in so many different ways. And the only way you can know how he speaks to you is time with him. Because uh, God is very unique. But he always starts with the base of his word. He'll never speak to you something that is not... Um, not at least in seed form in his word. He might expand on it for your life, but whatever he speaks to you will be in seed, might be in seed form um, when it comes to his, his word 
or it might be exactly what he spoke uh, to somebody else and he would say apply that principle that I gave to this person to your life but if you don't know how he speaks to you and if you don't know the base of his word you're not going to know that he's speaking and there are so there are even so many different ways to study his word and so many different people and avenues to study it nowadays and so many different ways to get his word in you. It's not always like a chapter a day or whatever. For some people it might be a verse a day that you meditate on or put somewhere. Some people it might be a verse a week, a chapter a week or whatever. And even that is tough. Even how you study his word will will be time with God. So it it st it all starts off with time with God. And that time with God means that that um, that he wants to be invited into your life. Yes, he wants separate time where you read your Bible, pray or whatever. But he also wants to be in the car with your kid, with you and your, your kids when, when they're fighting and punching each other. And he will tell you as a parent what to do. And as a single person without children, he will tell you how to interact with that certain person. If you have a disagreement, he will lay on your spirit what to do. He'll be like, with this person, don't say anything. Or, I need you to, to, to be good begin to communicate like this with this person. I don't know how, but how many times I've been in a situation where he's told me exactly what to do in that moment. And sometimes he's like a marionette. Um, he doesn't, sometimes he tells me first, but sometimes uh, my relationship with him uh, will tell me will be so such to the point was where I open my mouth and I say the right things. It's like he's a marionette but if and I'm a puppet in the best way. He pulls the strings, I go. Um but sometimes when I don't bring him into the situation it causes so much heartache and so much hell that I'm like, oh my god, I shouldn't have said that. That made that person mad. I should have prayed first or I should have done it more delicately or I should have asked him how to do it. Maybe the reason why you're having such problems with, in, with the relationships in your life is that you're not taking them to God. Because he knows you and he knows that person and he, he wants you to have fulfilling godly relationships that serve ultimately his glory and push you forward. He doesn't want you to be with people that pull you down. He wants to be with, he wants you to be with people that push you forward. So guys, thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciate you. And I hope that you enjoyed um, uh, talking to the mirror, meaning your two selves, like talking to the self that we all see and talking to the self that we don't see. And I hope this kind of gives you tips tips about how to get those uh, two to align and just to be honest about where you are 
so he can take you where he wants you. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye. I'm back to communication again. Um, the Lord is saying that there are families, there are husbands, there are wives, there are parents, there are children that are struggling with communication. And he's saying, talk to me about it. You've been struggling on your own, but you need to talk to me about it. I have the answer about how to talk to your daughter. I have the answer about how to talk to your son. I have the answer about how to talk to your husband. You've been sensing something about your husband, about your wife for years, but you're not able to talk to them about it. He said, talk to me. I will give you the words and the strategy. He's like, all you need is a strategy to talk to them. But you need to talk to me first because I know how to deal with that issue. You're struggling in silence, but you don't need to. Talk to me first, and I will give you the resources. I will give you the relationships. I will give you the strategy to talk to that person. And he says, no, you're not crazy. That person is really having that, that issue that you think they're having and that you're afraid to bring up. He's like, talk to me about it and I will give you strategy for the conversation. He's like, you're not walking alone. And if that person needs therapy, I will give you strategy. And if that person needs a doctor, I will give you strategy. But you need to bring it to me. And some of you have been bringing it to people and they've been uh, giving you all kinds of answers and I always say that we need people but we don't need people before we, we need Jesus. So before you bring it to another person, before you gripe and go clean to another person about that situation, bring it to God because he has the strategy. Thank you, Lord. And you're not alone. Whatever you're going through, you're not alone. You're not alone. First of all, he is with you. Second of all, there are people around you going through the exact same thing. All you have to do is with his guidance and his help, uh, reach out to first him for the strategy and then you can reach out to other people. There are resources and help out there for every, for everything and anything that you're going through. But you just have to stop um, struggling and suffering in silence. Your silence is the one that's killing you. And let me tell you something. You are not fooling anyone. There are people around you that know exactly what you're going through. And you are not fooling anyone by your silence. You're just making it harder for yourself. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time of day. Thank you, great God, because you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Lord, we worship you. Thank you for the healing that will come from this sermon. Thank you for the deliverance and forgiveness, oh God. Let a word for, from this sermon touch every heart that listens to it. Whether it be one person, two people, let it touch every heart that listens to it. God, 
let your word just be be written on our hearts and let our two selves let us be in the process of making our two selves our internal life and our external life line up in the name of Jesus amen So guys, I will see you later. Bye.